like i said at the beginning it's not the best location i think but it's all actually very very good what is up guys and welcome to the beyond sanas here my name is shanks and today we are going to cast a replay for bfme1 on the page 2.22 once again on the classical map forts of aizen and aizen is very important here because it's a isengard mirror match so isengard versus another isengard red versus green double furnace opening versus double furnace opening into the third furnace this opening i like more and this is more rewarding but also more risky because there is a chance you will lose it very very fast you know and you can't get the money back you invested into the lumber mill so three furnaces and inside the castle they are also better protected the furnace is you know tankier compared to a lumber mill and of course you can build a tower or two and have a much greater protection you know outside you have zero protection so what this Isengard player can do is he can capture this but of course he won't be able to keep them for a long time this mill is going to be taken down war chant has been used so you can take it down a bit faster so you basically get 50 percent more damage even though you are not fighting against enemy units the mission here is to destroy the mill asap because every single second matters okay so he's hiding those workers <laughs> they have the day off you know it's sunday you know what i mean <laughs> so also this one is going to be taken down and the red isinger player was able to capture both of these but this one is going to be taken down very very soon so three furnaces uruk pit into the uruk into the second uruk very soon into the furnace number four this isengard has also three furnaces inside the beast but of course his eco is not going to be as good yet however each of these mills if you have two or more will give you also the wood bonus you now making your structures cost less which gives you the chance to fill up the beast a bit faster so this hmm i think it's a mistake and i believe the right call would be to get back to the site and try to destroy these mills because furnaces are quite tanky and you will waste a lot of time i mean it's good if you can destroy it of course but it won't give you uh, enough value in my opinion so one two three furnaces uruk pit only one urukai so far and this player also has the uruk pit on the field but it's a little bit delayed and for that reason the green isengar player will be able to keep those mills under this control but look at that the four workers the red isengar player was able to save are now coming to fight you know they are fight, fighting with their work please okay nowadays it's difficult it turns out to find a new job <laughs> so they are like give us our job back or we are gonna smash you look they are actually dealing a great amount of economical damage 200 iq play i like that one okay so he's gonna immediately go forward this mill is gonna be taken down by the uruks they are also using the shield wall formation or what is this called the block formation so you are a bit more tanky which by the way is very very important especially when you stand still and fight because you only lose movement speed which doesn't really matter anything if you are fighting so the base is looking not too bad for furnaces and in this matchup also berserkers are going to be very important later on because they are you know going to be recruited very fast recruit time of eight seconds compared to the uruks with, with like uruk pit level two it's going to take you 15 seconds and berserker is very fast and also dealing great amount of damage so berserker is basically like a uruk a stronger uruk with forge blades oh but that's good one almost level three it's going to be very important to save this uruk don't lose him because later on you can combine this uruk with a crossbow man or you can give him forge blades and heavy armor because you guys know by now hopefully that the upgrades or each level matters so much you know it's gonna make them significantly stronger but full bees holy moly i mean also for this player so the next step is gonna be very important because here you have two options are you gonna go for the work pit so you have like more mobility you can trample the, the uruks and force your opponent player to recruit pikemen or are you gonna go for the armory you know try to go for a rush we will find out very soon this player actually going for the furnace two uruks three uruks one of them is also level two and don't tell me he lost the level three. Oh no but never mind save them i think if you can hack the wall here you can get away don't lose them he's paying attention to them oof that's gonna be quite maybe they can get away hold on a second i want to i want to take a look into this uh, uh. <laughs> he was able to get away calculated okay so kind of even game at this point of the game 
Uh, the Vork Pit is gonna be, of course, the difference maker in the situation. And that's gonna force the Green Isengard player Matthews to recruit some pikemen. Because Uruks are very, very vulnerable against the trample damage from the Vork Riders. With the whole ability in Warchan, they can actually deal a great amount of damage. They can creep the Vork layers on the map, get more map control, have more map presence. Because mobility in this game, in DFMU1, actually is quite, quite important and also very impactful. So he's gonna creep this, that's good. But he needs to be careful. I ah, never mind, he's gonna be just good to go. And the Red Isengard player might be able to steal the creep. Yeah, he got the last hit. And one part of the money, and two parts of the money. He's the thief. He's, you know, like Bilbo Baggins in the Hobbit trilogy. The Master Thief. Level 3 Uruks, very important to be saved. Very, very important. And Armory is upon the field. He already was able to buy the Forge Blitz into the Heavy Armor next. And he has an Uruk Pit level 2. So here it's going to be very important to not be greedy. You want to actually recruit the Pikemen. And if you don't know, you can combine your Pikemen with your Uruks to an ultimate infantry combination. And this way, you can also kind of counter indirectly, not directly like a Pikemen and Porcupine formation, but they are still a great counter to the enemy Walk Riders, okay? So you combine this and this. It's very cost efficient because you need to... Oh, hold on a second. They are badly damaged. Look at the trample damage, you see? Even with the heavy armor, the trample is a counter. But you want to trample over and over again. You don't want to sit there and fight them in melee range. You want to trample, knock them on the ground, so they don't get the chance to fight you back. But it looks like, and you see, this is very good, man, for Red Isinger player. Holy! Because this Uruk, remember, you need to invest 480 for the Forge Blades and 480 for the heavy armor. So it's basically 900 and quick math, 960 plus the 200 for the Uruks. So it's more than a thousand you need to invest for one Uruk with Forge Blades and Heavy Armor. And he just lost it. And you see the impactfulness of the Vorks. They are able to gather so many resources by destroying multiple mills, keep the map control. And again, this player has to definitely recruit more and more and more pikemen. Map control is looking phenomenal. So basically he demolished now the Vork Pit and going for the Armory. And I think that's the better build order in the situation. Because even though this player was able to get the upgrades a bit sooner, by the time he will make it to the castle of this Red Isengard player, he also will have the upgrades purchased. Indeed, look, he has so much money he was able to buy them at the same time. Forge Blades, Heavy Armor, and the Banner. But don't fight a fight you can't win. There is no need to fight this. Power point wise, we have almost three power points for Zemix. That's the Red Isengard player who has the map control advantage right now. And his opponent has three power points a bit more compared to his opponent after the industry. So they have the chance the, and the option to go for them Tainted Land. But in most cases, players in this matchup, Isengard Mirror matchup, are trying to get to the Freezing Rain power spike a bit sooner. Because Freezing Rain is going to make your, you know, opponent's units weaker as they will lose all the leadership bonuses. So amazing map control for the Red Isengard player. Indeed, he has like... 95% of the map, there is only one single mill so far for this player. And you can see, even though these units are very powerful, the Urukai, Uruk, Pikeman Horde, but they are also very immobile. They are so slow, you know, they can't keep up with the speed of the works. Okay, so, will he also buy Fire Arrows? Yeah, he bought, he bought actually all, so he can just demolish it. You should be demolishing it as soon as possible because it's wasting a spot in your castle. And remember, in this game, compared to Bifumi 2 or Rise of the Witch King, you need to be kind of smart about how you are using your available settlements. Oh my goodness. Okay. Oh, he has also work. One, two. Oh, they want to fight this. Who let the works out? Don't lose, don't lose, don't lose. Oh, he lost a whole battalion. That's that's very unfortunate. So he might be able to, you know, capture this outpost for himself, build three furnaces around it to get a bit more money going. Uh, later on, also Saruman is going to be a very impactful hero. Nobody was going for the Lourdes. So even if somebody will go for Lourdes, it's going to take you ages to get him from level 1 to level 5 and to unlock the leadership. But Lourdes is going to be still very important. The second you see enemy has Saruman, you have to recruit your Lourdes to cripple him. Otherwise, Saruman is going to be a farming machine and he will be able to farm so many power points for you, you know? Siege War is coming up next. It's a mistake. There is no need to do this because you have not any reason to go for siege weapons in an open base situation, especially if your opponent has not even combos, you know, the Uruk crossbowman combo. There is no need because he has only this midi combos and... 
your siege weapons are not going to be very impactful against those. So outpost here for Red Isinger player. And Green Isinger actually getting more into more map control. You know, instead of this, you want to go for Lourdes as, or Saruman. Saruman, of course, even better. And you should be golden. Because this is going to be so expensive. You know, the Ballista will cost you 600 each. And the Siege Works will cost you around 1500. So you're basically wasting so much money without getting any value. All right. Palantir in War Chant has been used. The Green Isinger player is going to visit. Oof. They are zooming. I mean, still a great amount of damage dealt. And you see, offense is the best defense. You know, not only he was able to destroy the Citadel from his opponent uh, and also multiple furnaces, but also he was forcing his opponent to use his own war chant defensively. So he that's a big W in my book for the Green Isinger player. The only thing, again, I mean, even though he was kind of able to reclaim a bit more map control in the meantime, Red Isengard has still the better standing. You know, he has double outposts with three furnaces, so three furnaces here, three here. So he has six furnaces in total and still plenty of settlements outside. He should be able to recover. And that should be the proof about the importance of the map control in this game. At every stage of the game, map control is the most important factor to decide the outcome of the game and I, I see this multiple times in the games between good players decent players or medium players they are making the mistake they are playing a flawless game in the first 10 to 15 minutes into the game but the longer the game goes on the more they drop their guard and the more they stop caring about map control and that's a big mistake that's a loose condition you know always keep an eye on the minimap and make sure that more than 60 percent of the map is under your control okay we have two combos and this uruks they are not a good choice you want to combine them with pikemen it's very important because there are war riders they will trample you and this player has actually not enough money they are far away from getting to the point of recruiting saruman and you have seen yourself that the siege works did absolutely do nothing for the red isinger player but now the counter push will be very important how much damage will he be able to deal because now you see multiple level 3 furnaces they're going to be able to shoot but also in exchange if you can destroy them your opponent will lose lots of money especially this furnace here is giving him 100 resources 100 and it's going to be destroyed to the uruk crossbowman uh, to the uruk pikeman combo but you can see the base is quite durable right and he was only able to destroy one single furnace and the reason is simple because his opponent was using the freezing rain and shutting down your leadership bonuses you are getting from the war chant so no 50 percent damage no 50 percent armor you ain't getting nothing okay and but i mean we need to keep give credits to the red isinger player he has always been able to maintain the map control dominance pretty much throughout the entire game but only his decision making throughout the game could be improved big time okay so again i think he had much more eco than his opponent but the choice of going for the siege vortex cost him lots of momentum and also lots of cash and now there comes the counter push one two three and his opponent has almost a freezing rain but remember you need seven power points for it and he went for the tainted land first which is going to be a big problem because the longer the game goes on the more closer than his opponent the green isengard player will get to the balrog power point choices is very important because later if you pick too many power points you know in a dream world you want to get to the ultimate power spike of baldrog when you play evil faction or the eod when you play the good faction as soon as you potentially can so when you pick multiple different power points it's going to slow you down and you will be kind of behind and your opponent might be able to get to the balrog way sooner than you and i don't need to tell you how important and impactful balrog and eod is in this game and look at the minimap now it has been completely <laughs> turned into the color of green the only two settlements remaining is this and he actually went for the field of fires too okay I mean, he, he will have better eco, I guess, but Freezing Green is just so powerful, you know? 
Okay, so but there is Saruman this time. That's gonna be an easy defense. He's going for a trample and he stole them all. Okay, so what is the plan here? The plan, what that you should be doing, here you have the chance to get so many power points from your opponent. You put them inside the castle and right click on the Visa Plus so he will auto cast it the second the control goes handed over to the opponent player, to the original player. But you want to right click on this one. He did it. Watch this, boys. Watch this. Boom, son. But they don't die, of course, because the Warchan is still active on them. In Fireball, they still be able. They will still be able to destroy the Orphan. But it's a good situation, nonetheless, for the Red Isinger player. He will be able to get a lot of power points. But in the meantime, I want you to take a look into the map control. He, remember, the Red Isinger player went for the Field of Fires. That only provides value for you if you are able to have Lambert Mills outside of your castle. And that is, that's just not the case. He has only one single lumber mill under this control. That's just not enough, okay? <laughs> that's just not enough. We have two combos. He has to rebuild his citadel for the second time in this game. And Saruman, I mean, of course, we want to also use the speechcraft on cooldown. You want to use it every 1 minute and 30 seconds over and over again. It's free experience and you will get level 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And again, each level will make them significantly stronger. Rise, the warriors of Isengard. Go to the Helm's Deep and burn them all. Slay them all. Dude, look, he, he's not happy with the map control. You see, you know, he's like, are you sure about that, bro? What, what, what have you done? I'm looking at you, man. Map control is not looking good. Maybe I jinxed him. But there is also a Saruman now for the Green Isengard player. But again, the second you see this, you need to recruit Lourdes. Lourdes is the best anti-hero in the game. You just cripple him. He can't move for like 30 seconds or a minute. A minute, actually. Which is a long time. And actually enough time to kill him. But remember, this player has nothing that can shoot. Okay? So, no range combos. Range combos... In a one-on-one -on -one situation will lose versus the melee combos but the quantity is very important so they can deal a lot of damage before the melee combos can make it to them and firepower is just very important so here's one two three combos in one uruk pikeman combo they are also glowing because of the saruman leadership but freezing rain is available for mateusz 316 that means the leadership will be negated once he presses on the button it is lords uh, he blasted them. What is, what is Lourdes doing? Lourdes crippled him, maybe? Uh, he okay, he crippled them. But in the meantime, there comes the counter push. Freezing Rain has been activated. And this Saruman gives the most additional armor. In this situation, what the Red Isinger player has to do is manually click on every single sentry tower. And oh, never mind. Saruman actually ditched. Okay. So they are going for the beast raid, by the way. Saruman has been crippled, but there is nothing that can take him down. There is not an army from the Green Isengard player. But he has double outpost control. So even if he dis loses the main castle, he will not lose the game. That's a mispositioning over here. They are diving in way too deep. In this at this point of the game, every structure beside the war beside the Uruk pit and the war pit, because they are level two only, will be able to shoot at you. And for that reason, you need to fight front to back. Okay, you wanna. Destroy the towers first and go slowly. Patience is very important. Because look the amount of damage the green the red the green, sorry, the green Isengard player was able to deal to the red Isengard player with only one Uruk Pikeman combo because he was playing front to back. And saving units also very important. The trample is incoming. Heavy armor purchase first. That's very smart. So you don't take too much damage. Fireball has been queued in. Beautiful fireball from the young wizard Saruman. The, com uh, the works have to disengage. This Saruman could have been sent back to spot this. But I, I, maybe he's certain that he won't lose the castle just yet. Okay? Because the, the base is very durable. As you can see and tell. Uh, the furnaces with 5500 HP. And the, the thing that they can shoot non-stop makes them quite quite tanky look at the beautiful trample damage and that's a proof that you should never ever did he use it no he cancelled it okay so all right beautiful and he's of course rebuilding the citadel now for the i think for the third or fourth time and map control is not looking very good the works are doing a phenomenal job making sure to damage them as much as they can and it will also delay their regeneration time because in order to regenerate your army they need to be out of combat for like 30 seconds and whenever you engage on them that timer will be resetted and then they will need even longer time to be recovered you know 
Big push is incoming. Warm Tongue has been used. Army has been stolen. Fireball. And this guy has a big arsenal of powers in his kit. He can do so many shenanigans. But let's see. Fireball will also chunk him, but he's gonna blast the army first. With the leadership of Saruman, they also have additional armor that makes them be able to survive this. Fireball, he's getting fired. This Saruman should just disengage. He's not a good out attacker, by the way. Even though the melee damage is 130, it's not, uh, you know, bad by all means. But he's out attacking very slowly. So, this guy's a caster. So you wanna use your abilities and disengage. But this Saruman has been killed. It gathered... And I mean, he was able to get a 14 power points. And in the meantime, he also was able to get decent amount of map control. And you see, that's a dilemma I was trying to explain at the beginning of the game. Players, they are good players actually, but they stop caring about map control when they have a decent amount of money. And of course, because he stopped caring about map control, look the money from the Green Isinger player. He's dropping down to less than a thousand. He needs to revive his Lourdes and his Saruman, but he has no money to revive his Saruman yet. You need 2,000 to do this. But he has 18 and a half power points collected in his bank, okay? Almost 19. It means he's only one power point away from the demon of the ancient world. We will definitely get the chance to see him, I think, for both players. Because keep in mind, the reason why evil factions need 20 power points to unlock the Balrog, while the good factions like Gondor or Rohan need only 10 power points to unlock the army of the dead is because evil factions are able to gather power points from losing units and especially heroes when you lose saruman you actually gain like two power points right off the bat you know so it's like a solid tactic uh, it's not don't lose your saruman on purpose just to get power points <laughs> Okay, he's gonna attack over and over again. 5,000 for the Red Isengard player. Field of Fire is actually kicking in. Of course, evil factions are designed to be the money powerhouse. They can they have like power points designed so they can gather more money compared to the good factions, while good factions have their special summons, okay? The outpost will be destroyed, no problemo. But he will have the power points soon. There comes the Visa Blast. He is smashing it. Now he has the Balrog available. I'm pretty certain he's going to use it right here to kill the army. I'm pretty certain about this. He should be doing this. Or maybe he can do this here too. But he's going to use it, like I said at the beginning, to kill the army of Isengard. And to, you know, wipe out the highly leveled units. One Uruk was able to survive. If you can get him away, he can respawn over time. But Balrog, and that's the beautiful part about Balrog, he has no cooldown on the wings. So you can summon him on the one side of the map and keep flying to the other side of the map. <laughs> you know, because you have enough time to do this. As you can fly over and over again. Ignite has been used. And that's what would happen if Balrog would fight against Isengard. Uruk at level 3 won't get destroyed to one single hit. Because the production buildings, maybe your Orc Pits, Siege Works barracks archer range or uruk pits they are gonna be able to survive the breath fire because we nerfed balrog and also eod look that's what i'm saying you know but he has no time anymore he will not be able to, he will be able to land and that's it Ooh, still nice okay so now z mix has the chance of his life okay balrog is very powerful so is eod but we nerfed their cooldowns in the game big time we have eight minutes and 30 seconds cooldown on these summons okay so now i mean earlier in the original game they had like five minutes cooldown only or six minutes maximum and that means you couldn't even recover from the eod from the eod or balrog before the second one would be available and now we are trying to make it so you cannot only rely on your EOD or Baldrog to win your games. Outpost will be destroyed. Saruman is almost level 8, which, by the way, is going to be a massive power spike. Lourdes has been revived. Saruman is also going to be back in the business very, very soon. Isengard. I mean, look, when you have this much money, what you want to do is you want to build multiple production buildings, okay? You want to build a second Uruk pit, a war pit. You want to keep spamming units. At this point, it's not about losing units anymore because your opponent has already unlocked the Balrog. It's about spamming units, having the quantity, out-spam your opponent big time. If you have good eco, you can afford to do this. But that's one of the mistakes too. They are always sitting on one Uruk pit only. That's okay at the beginning of the game, in the mid game, but in the lead game, you actually can afford multiple Uruk pits, multiple war pits, multiple troll cages, multiple stables. 
you know, because you have the money. The money you have in the bank and you have nothing to recruit or nothing you are saving for is completely useless. And he also never recruited lords, by the way, which of course is a mistake too. He has 18 and a half power points. He's losing once again the majority of his castle. And the problem is he has not a single level 3 furnace on the field anymore. He will not be losing the castle just yet. There comes another army of Uruks. You see, he has a Uruk pit here too. You want to keep swarming units because even though he has like less money than his opponent, he has four power points in the bank. What you can do is you can go for the position and turn the power points into the money. Okay, so he has four Uruks. But imagine, you know, imagine if this player would have a war cry or two. That would be over, you know what I mean? Trample them. He went for the devastation indeed. Turn it into money because he needs a lot of cash to get upgrades on this Uruks. It's, uh, he was able to see this though. The Red Isinger player was able to see this, so he knows what his opponent is up to. But knowing might not change the outcome of the situation. Because he's actually getting all the army into one location and he want to go for the big push. Saruman is going into deep. He was only able to see one combo. Oh my goodness, he also still only one combo. This Saruman has been killed though, and you see, that's why, that's the reason why you have to recruit lords. Because if you have lords around the situation, oh, son! Boom! Bomba! If you have lords here, Saruman could never do this. He was just using the Villa of Saruman, he's using Palanti, he's zooming out. But this, okay. Okay, so the Red Isinger player was able to dominate this. Now everything is on cooldown, I think. Yeah, only Visa Plus is available. He cancelled the Breath Fire. That's not the best location, I think, but it's all oh, actually very, very good. He destroyed three Furnaces level 3. He will also be able to destroy the Uruk Pit level 3. That's, uh, but in the meantime, the counter push is happening. With multiple Uruks and Vork Riders, this Green Isinger player is saying, okay, you know what? If you destroy my castle, I will destroy yours. But remember, they both have an outpost. The Green Isinger player is the outpost at the bottom left, and the red one has the top right and this army might be able to destroy this here just spam berserkers okay that's what i would like to do because they have the fastest recruit time six seconds you can spam them all the time get units up on the field crossbow man they want to achieve too much and remember furnace is not being level three saruman has been able to fireball he's very fast he's faster and look lord is diving in too he's level one he's drawing the sword he doesn't care Oh my goodness, he's going for it. He's going for it. Nice dodge. Amazing dodge. You see, these moves are what I like to see. These players are improving. But in the meantime, the castle is going to be destroyed. There is no chance he can save this. Money is still looking very good for uh, Mateusz, by the way. He has 3.5. But his opponent, the Red Isinger player, and that's the proof that Field of Fires is actually paying off. He has 12,000. So he will be able to get this. Lourdes is going to die. You can't outrun arrows. They are not going to miss in this game. The castle has been captured while his original castle has been destroyed. Now we have a very awkward situation. Mateusz will be able to buy this castle, yes, but he has no money to fill it. However, the devastation is gonna be available very, very soon. And what's even more important, the Balrog summon is gonna be available for a second time in a second too. So what I can't tell you who is going to win this, but I can tell you one thing. Balrog is going to be able to wipe out this army in a second. Yes, filled the base completely. Mateusz is poor because he's reviving. No, he, he can't even revive. He went for the field of fires. He has not a good, good amount of map control. He's going for the outpost top right. He finally has been building the Uruk pit. Balrog is available. And I can tell you, I can bet with you that he will be summoning it right here. He's smashing it. Waiting on cooldown. And the second it's available, the, the second it's going to be blinking. Watch this. Now it's blinking. Oh. Oh, he's summoning it here. Um, okay. I, I don't know about that one, to be honest. I don't know. I, I think it's a mistake to summon it here. Because I don't think you can destroy everything. Even the... Ooh. Nice, Breath Fire. But I still think you it's not the right call. Even, like, let, let's assume you are destroying everything, right? But you will not be able to win anyway. Even though if you can destroy this outpost, he will just be able to buy this outpost, right? So he should be just good to go. This move only makes sense is if you have map control and if you are going for the win. 
but the towers you won't be able to destroy them because there are still many towers left you can just rebuild this in the last possible second but the red Isengard player is going for the main castle so um there are still combos and he might be even able to protect his outpost by the way the duration of Balrog is gone he was not able to finish off the castle of Isengard and there comes the Uruk pit and you see the money is not looking that good and you one one thing i can also one advice i can give also to the evil faction players in give me one is in the late game which we are in right now the lumber mills are not gonna give, be, be value, you know very valuable because look there, there are no more trees you can actually harvest so you need to replace them at some part of the game with the slaughterhouses like he did for example in this situation right and the longer the workers need to walk to gather wood the less value they are providing so he will be able to destroy this castle and nobody has the money to buy it okay this outpost he is not paying attention to it nobody is paying attention to this actually they are kind of chilling here but this will be destroyed just cancel it to get the thousand back that costs you a thousand so don't let it go for no reason no money for saruman without saruman you can't defend this and also no money for saruman for the red isinger player so he will be only at one outpost because this army oh never mind they are finally realizing okay we need to defend this balrog is gonna be available very very soon for zemix the outpost uh, the castle has been destroyed <laughs> and this castle is gonna also be destroyed so you saw they are kind they were kind of trying to uh, avoid each other for the past 10 minutes into the game we had not like a big fight between armies and armies they were kind of trying to avoid fighting and go for the castle go for the structures that's also something you can do with isengard because your units your combos are actually very you know fast compared to the good faction combos like gondor and rohan even though elves are faster but of course the open beast no outpost control Matheus will be defeated and that's gonna be the end of the game gg well played guys i hope you enjoyed this one if you did you know what to do i will see you next time until then take care of yourselves keep hitting like a truck and as always ladies and gentlemen Stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.